class, in this video I'm going to be working through Unit 4, Worksheet 2, and this is related to Avogadro's hypothesis. Now, in Unit 2, when we studied gases, we learned that the pressure of a gas is proportional to the Kelvin temperature when the volume and number of particles is held constant. Now, if we were to take equal volumes of two different gases, but we keep them at the same temperature, so in this figure, our temperature bulb is this little sphere thing in the corner. We've got two different gases. You can see that the particles are drawn differently. These are bigger particles. But they're at the same pressure. They're at the same temperature. They're at the same volume. Where all of our other relationships are the exact same. So what Avogadro said was that if you've got constant pressure, constant temperature, and your volumes are the same, then you have the same number of particles. And he didn't just say particles. When Avogadro wrote his hypothesis, he said molecules. So let me rewrite what Avogadro's hypothesis was. His hypothesis, and I'm going to abbreviate it for the sake of time, his hypothesis was that if you have equal volumes of two gases at the same pressure and temperature, then you would have, then it would contain equal number of molecules. If your container is the same size, same pressure, same temperature, then you have the same number of molecules within that container. What does a molecule mean? Well, a molecule is any clump of atoms, clump of particles. So for example, molecules could be things that look like that. They could be things that look like this. Anytime you have multiple atoms, which are the individual circles, and you glue them together in either elements or compounds, then you have molecules. Okay. So you can go ahead and read this text on your own, but I'm going to talk about how this works in order to produce our product. These boxes refer to your volumes. So for example, we have, um, I guess it doesn't really say in there, we'll see this in other examples. This would be two volumes of hydrogen reacting with one volume of oxygen to form your water product. Now, this is a box. This is the same size box. This is the same size box. We're producing water, which I'm assuming is the same size box. It hasn't said us otherwise. So my number of particles, my number of molecules in each of these boxes is going to be the same. So if I randomly say that I have four particles of hydrogen, I could use three, I could use two, I could use five. I'm randomly picking four. Because this is the same sized box, I've got four particles here, four clumps here, I need four in this box too. And it needs to be the same gas because these are hydrogen. So here are my four particles for hydrogen. Same size box, therefore I need the same number of molecules. So I had four in this box, I had four in this box, that means I need four in this box. And I'm using a different color because this is a different element. It has different properties, so I'm making it a different color. Now, when we're forming our product, it says, react these molecules to form water, leaving no leftover gas. 
What happens when we combine gases together or compounds together is that this atom over here and one from this box and one from this box is going to combine together to form something that looks like this. Or I can rearrange my particles. It doesn't really matter how you've arranged them. As long as they're a clump with two hydrogens and one oxygen. So one of these, one of these, shove them together with one of those. Ultimately, I should end up with four of these clumps in this box that's labeled product, which makes sense because I had four in each of my starting boxes. Okay, um, these are not working out very well. There we go. So let me draw this in paper, but notice that I started all of these re all of these atoms combined together, reformed my product. I didn't just make new product; they rearranged themselves. So let me write this a little prettier without weird paper circles. Um, I had four of my hydrogens in this box, which means I had four hydrogens in this box. Same size box, so I've got four oxygens in this box. I need a different particle. One from here, one from here, one from here, I'm going to form water. And I had four, four, four. I have enough particles to form four molecules of water. That is Avogadro's hypothesis. The amount of volume that you have, if they are equal volumes, then they contain equal numbers of your molecules, equal numbers of your clumps. Um, this is how they, they came up with formulas for your products. Now, at the very top, what is the H, the O, and the 2? describe so if we've got H2O for water what does that H mean what does the 2 mean what does the O mean please go ahead and answer that off to the side now for 3 and 4 very similar process we've got similar size boxes we're forming our product it just says one volume of product so go ahead and fill in what we have for hydrogen chlorine and nitrogen hydrogen for these two examples Fill that in for your products. Okay, hopefully this is what you got. Again, it does not matter how many particles we start with. I started with five. Um, one, two, three, four, five in this box, which means one, two, three, four, five in this box. When they combine together, I'm taking one of these, one of these, combining them together, and I would have one, two, three, four, five clumps of that in this box. Similar to down here, I used three particles this time. Again, it doesn't matter as long as you keep the same number consistent. So three clumps, three clumps, three clumps, three clumps. One from each box would give me a dark circle with three open circles, and I would have one, two, three of those clumps in my product. If I was to write the formula for these, one volume hydrogen, so one hydrogen, one volume chlorine, one chlorine. I had one nitrogen and one, two, three volumes of hydrogen, so these would be NH3. That is part one for Avogadro's hypothesis. Now, sometimes, let's go ahead and read part two, Chemists occasionally found that one volume of gas A reacted with one volume of gas B and it produced two volumes of your product. Twice as much product, even though we're starting with the same amount of boxes at the beginning. Um, early chemists like Guy Lussac were unable to account for this behavior. Avogadro said, that the molecules of some gaseous elements must contain two atoms. What does that mean? It means that if we took, kind of the same here with your number five, consider the reaction between hydrogen and chlorine. 
two volumes of hydrogen chloride are formed. So that means that here we've drawn two boxes for a hydrogen chloride. Sketch particle diagrams consistent with Avogadro's hypothesis to represent this reaction. Explain why hydrogen and chlorine molecules that have only one atom cannot account for your observed behavior. Okay, he said that some gaseous elements must contain two atoms. So my original picture, I had five of hydrogen, five of my chlorine, and I produced one, two, three, four, five molecules, five clumps of my hydrogen chloride. What's happening now is that occasionally we have two volumes being formed, which means that I am forming this same product and I still have five clumps of it in this box. I have the same number of clumps as before. Right now, this is obeying Avogadro's hypothesis because I've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dark circles on this side. Only five on this side. So our law of conservation of mass is not happy right now because it says that we're forming more particles than what we started with or that what it appears for how we started with. But Avogadro came up with this great conclusion. He said that some elements contain two atoms, which means that within this clump, I don't just have one particle, I have two. And that all of these individual clumps have two atoms that are stuck together. This right now is a molecule. Each individual circle is an atom. So must contain two atoms for every one molecule. Must contain two circles for every clump. That would fix my number of dark circles because I still have one, two, three, four, five clumps, but now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dark circles that are in my product. Hydrogen behaves the same way. It's not just one circle, but it's two that are stuck together. I still have one, two, three, four, five clumps. One, two, three, four, five clumps. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I still have five clumps or five molecules in each volume of boxes but now I have enough particles to account for my two volumes of product being formed. When your elements are two atoms together, we call them diatomic. Di means two, atomic means atom, so this is two atoms together to form a molecule. There are seven elements that will be diatomic. Bromine is one of them, which is abbreviated BR. Um, iodine. Nitrogen. Chlorine. Um, hydrogen. oxygen, and fluorine. Those are the seven elements that will be diatomic when they are elements. So which means that in their natural elemental state, they come as a pair of two. See what you can for number six and seven. Go ahead and finish this off. Hope that was helpful. You do need to know these seven diatomics. You'll need to have those memorized. One way that you could memorize these is that if I take the, all of these abbreviations and make a word out of them, 
B-R-I-N-C-L-H-O-F. It spells Brinkelhoff. So this is one way that you could remember these seven diatomics is try to spell Brinkelhoff. Kind of sounds like a person's last name. Hope that was helpful. Come see me outside of class if you want some one-on-one -on -one help.